Well, here's the river. We ought to be about here. Yeah, right at the end of the out. Huh? Well, the foliation really stands out here, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, got some porch lamelets. As geologists study the earth, they are searching for answers to questions like how are mountains formed, where were the ancient seas, or even how old is the earth. The history of our planet is contained in its crust. Many clues are there if we just look for them, but it takes a trained observer and often years of hard work to come up with the answers. Much data has to be gathered in a systematic way, and written records must be kept of everything observed. One tool geologists use as they study the planet is the geologic map. With it, they can combine detailed studies in many small areas to form a picture of the rocks over a wide area. Vashti Jones is one member of a team of geologists. She and her co-workers begin studying an area by first obtaining a base map that shows the location of roads and streams. Then they try to find out if other geologists have worked in the area, and if so, what they found. Any important geologic information from earlier studies, like mines or faults, is added to the base map. When all the information is on the base map, the team is ready to go into the area and begin a systematic study of the rocks. Every exposure of rock, called an outcrop, is checked. At each outcrop, one member of the team makes careful notes because they know they will forget some important fact unless it is written down and marked on the map. When the rocks at an outcrop are unusual or different from the others in the area, Gina collects a sample which she and Ron will study more carefully in the laboratory. Six east. As they go along, the base map serves as a guide. Check it out, they refer to it frequently to be sure of the accuracy of the locations they record in their notes. They also mark the position of important rock types on the map. Tilted rocks usually indicate folding or faulting. To find out what they mean, their position is measured and recorded as strike and dip. The strike of a bed of rock is the compass direction of its trace across the land surface. Gina measures the strike in degrees using a compass, taking great care to measure the direction horizontally. Okay, our strike is north, 70 east. Once the rock strike is known, she proceeds to measure its dip. And we're dipping 65 degrees to the northwest. Dip is the angle at which the bed slopes into the earth and is found by measuring the angle between the sloping rock bed and an imaginary horizontal line at 90 degrees to the strike. Gina is using a special compass called a Brunton. A bubble level in the compass marks the imaginary horizontal line, and a scale marks off the angle in degrees. With the strike and dip of the rock recorded, a sample collected, and their observations written down, Gina and Vashti move on to the next outcrop. As the days and weeks pass, Gina, Vashti, Clay, and Ron continue checking outcrops, adding new information to their map. Rock types are noted, strikes and dips measured, and locations plotted.
On rainy days, there is time for a more detailed study of the specimens they collected in the field. using microscopes and thin slices of the rock samples. They can study their structure and learn more about how they form. Sorry, we're supposed to be volcanics. I think all of this is volcanic. I think these are As they fill in their observations on the map and mark the rock types in different colors, the geology of the area begins to emerge. Often, unanswered questions make it necessary to go back to certain outcrops for another look and perhaps another sample. As each puzzle is worked out, the map slowly becomes a complete picture of the rocks. In its final form, the map will serve other geologists in a variety of ways. Geologic maps can be used to find mineral deposits, to locate land use problems, or simply to add another piece to the puzzle of our planet's history.